I feel like I've talked a lot about female characters on this channel, and though I have no plans to stop anytime soon because Hollywood and its subsidiaries keep giving me fantastic material to work with, I think it's time to talk about the guys next. I've made a video about how males have been utterly ruined in the MCU, but now I want to broaden my spectrum a little because it seems as if every time I turn around, a new movie or TV show is being made with a strong female character, and any males that are featured in it are unbelievably beta. Take the new Dungeons & Dragons movie that's come out, in which writers unashamedly admit that they take pleasure in emasculating their male characters. But don't worry guys, it's not for woke reasons. Instead, they use the excuse that they did it because they thought that humiliating men would be fresh and fun. Of course, actors like Chris Pine don't really help matters because he seems to delight in being humiliated. What that says about him as a person, I don't know, and I don't want to know. He's not doing himself any favors, and this movie featuring Michelle Rodriguez in her usual role as the action heroine just makes this movie and its stereotypes so typical, it's painful. But this movie segues into the first of my three reasons for why modern male characters are so terrible. Put simply, they're weak. I don't actually mean physically weak, although we will get to that. I mean spineless. Every male character these days lacks courage or values and are simply there to be a punching bag for the main female character to order about or else disregard entirely. Take characters like Bruce Banner, one of the original Avengers. They had recasted Edward Norton after a standalone movie and the change to Mark Ruffalo was unexpected, but after seeing him in the role, a welcome one. Throughout the first Avengers movie, it was very refreshing to see a character recognize the damage that they are capable of, even if it wasn't truly their fault, and accept accountability for the, their actions even if it wasn't truly deserved. He was a serious character, recognized the faults in others as well as himself when the Avengers were in their preliminary stages. He didn't make excuses for people, and he certainly didn't make excuses for himself. He was brutally honest about where he had come from and how dark his past was, so much so that he had tried to commit suicide before learning that he wasn't fully capable of it. Nothing about him was physically or emotionally weak. He was a well-thought-out character, had his own character arc in the movie, with multiple main leads and still managed to stand on his own despite all the action that was happening around him with simple but key words and phrases. And now what is he? A sideshow in the Avengers movies because people think that Professor Hulk is more interesting than the character of Bruce Banner and the struggles he went through earlier in his life. He doesn't say a word when Jennifer castigates him for apparently being able to hold her temper better than he can and is shown up and look like a fool in every aspect of being a Hulk with scenes like this one. The Hulk was once the scariest creation in the Marvel Universe, with the one most terrified of losing control being Bruce Banner himself. He's gone to very dark places, both as an Avenger and in his own mind. So why on earth is he taking crap from Jennifer when she has not suffered nearly an iota as much as he has? He does not stand up for himself anymore. He does not question the motives and words of those around him anymore. And a once cornerstone of the MCU has now been turned into a spineless joke. That's to say nothing of our new Captain America. Sam spent six episodes fighting Carly Morgenthau for her acts of domestic terrorism and the entitlement that she, that she tried to put on the national stage. He has ample reason to dislike her for both her acts of murder and for the fact that she threatened his nephews, and yet upon her death, where she escapes all accountability for her actions, he immediately turns around and starts spouting the very ideology that she espoused, with whiplash intensity. The show spent so much time trying to get us to hate Walker, which took the focus off of Carly, trying to make her look like a victim and make him look like a weaker version of Cap so we would hate him when she was the one who should have been on the receiving end of all the fans' vitriol. And speaking of vitriol, it seems like this that in retrospect really blow my mind. John Walker, who is supposed to be an Olympic-level athlete with incredible athletic skill, is bested by a woman with a spear. At the time, it's supposed to be humorous, but looking back, it's really just insulting. He is made to look like a complete fool physically along with his friend while the Wakandans clean house. I don't care how well-trained Okoye and her Dora Milaje are. They should not be able to fight a well-trained man like Walker and beat him. They do not have the same muscle density and durability that he has. He was weakened pathetically and it was all done for a laugh. This is how a realistic fight between a man and a woman should have turned out. Do I expect the girl to act like a damsel in distress? Absolutely not. I would like for her to get a few good hits in, which is what happened, but Ciri could not defeat the soldiers without Geralt. It has nothing to do with discrimination or the patriarchy or whatever ridiculous reasons that showrunners come up with to show their narcissism and lack of experience in real life. It is simply body makeup and creators seem to forget that males and females are different for a reason and that no female, no matter how well trained, would be able to best a similarly trained male and win. It simply doesn't work that way. Reason number two falls into a similar vein to the weakness category. Male characters are now stupid. 
I've already spoken of Sam's complete ideology change, but with characters like Thor and Loki, who in their recent shows and movies are somehow turned into complete idiots when that was never their M.O. at all, just blows my mind to smithereens. This scene in the TVA will forever and always make me want to pull my hair out. Loki is one of the smartest characters in Marvel's pantheon, and when presented with a drawer full of Infinity Stones, supposedly the most powerful things in the known universe, he does not think to take them so that he might use them at a later date. At all. Thor, likewise, has been turned into a similar buffoon since the Infinity Saga ended, referencing the Altar of Eternity as a place where one wish can be granted. Apparently, Thor has always known about this place and just never thought to mention it in the Infinity Saga when it could have been used to kill Thanos or else bring back everyone and everything that they've lost. How YTD didn't think this through, I will never know, but he is just as foolish as the characters that he is creating. Additionally, there is the ridiculous dialogue that is equal parts foolish and eye-roll inducing. The name-changing of Axel, the ridiculous love triangle between Thor, Mjolnir, and Stormbreaker, the inability to defeat his enemy even though he was clearly a match for him, leaving Jane to do it, followed by the knowledge that all of his success is suddenly attributed to one woman he knew for a few years out of his near 1500. There are so many things about Thor's foolishness that make me want to tear my hair out, but I've already made a video on how he has been completely and utterly destroyed, so if you want to watch that, feel free to head over to my channel to do so. But I can't completely tear Marvel a new one about how they have treated their characters without looking to the examples of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker. These men were two cornerstones of the Star Wars franchise, and yet in their respective movies and TV shows have been turned into complete fools by Disney writers. Luke Skywalker, who had such a fascination with the Jedi ways, wanting to learn everything he could, and pushing Yoda to teach him even though he was declared as too old, seeking inspiration and in turn inspiring others, has somehow become a foolish old man who mocks the past, mocks the Jedi, and mocks the Force itself because the writers didn't know what to do with him. As for Obi-Wan Kenobi, this is a more recent but still utterly heartbreaking degradation of such a beloved character. I have mixed feelings on the prequel trilogy as a whole, but Ewan McGregor as the negotiator was certainly not part of that. He was easily the best thing about those movies and had me frothing at the mouth to see more of him when his television show was announced. And yet, in a show that was entitled to be his, he suddenly seems to lose all sense, particularly in scenes like this one where he somehow forgets that there are stormtroopers surrounding them looking for someone named Leia Organa and just blurts her name out in front of them. Likewise, he turns to Leia in a crisis, claiming to trust her when she is 10 years old and has given him no reason to believe she is capable of anything. She certainly isn't capable of listening to him, that's for sure. And finally, my third and perhaps most egregious flaw that I have found in these modern male characters is that they are simply uninspiring. They have become so flawed to a point of mockery, and it's sickening and exhausting to watch. Characters that we started off knowing and loving 10, 20, 30 years ago have suddenly become people that I would rather not watch anymore. The writing of these once great men has degraded, pushing a narrative that is equal parts nihilistic and cynical. We see it with Obi-Wan in his self-titled show. In the very first episode, he meets a young Jedi on the run who begs him for help and Obi-Wan refuses to do so, saying that the Order is no more and it's everyone for themselves. Obi-Wan Kenobi, who, who has always been a pinnacle of the Jedi tenants, a staunch believer in the light side of the Force, and who was flawed but who never hesitated to help someone in need, has now become a coward and a skulker. As mentioned with Luke Skywalker, I almost felt as if I were watching a clone of him in The Last Jedi, because the person I was watching cannot have been the one who destroyed the Death Star, lost a hand to Darth Vader, and then brought his father back to the light with his own love and light. Instead, the stench of failure surrounded him to the point where he embodied none of the hope of the ages past. He was content to drink blue milk and sit on his island in silence, waiting to die and even hoping for it in some ways because the writers had determined that the only good Luke Skywalker could do for this world was to pass on and leave it to others. Not only is this highly disrespectful to one of the cornerstones of pop culture, but it is concerning as well because modern media and writers are telling us that we cannot and should not look to men as heroes. They are not inspiring, they are not worth valuing, and the best thing they can do for us is to die so that someone younger, better, and preferably female can take over. And that is perhaps the most foolish mistake Yet, we need heroes, whether they are male or female. We need people who are flawed but not mocked. We need figures that are capable of growth and change. And if Hollywood continues to do this to beloved heroes, continues to make them weak and stupid and uninspiring, then I say that we should just make our own. Drop a comment down below about what you think are the least desirable traits in modern male characters these days, and let's have a conversation about it. Until next time, everyone.